welcome to another episode of DSEI Insights in Action. My name is Marko Kovacevic. We are fortunate to have our three distinguished guests today. Sean Muma, Director of Supply Chain Innovation and Emerging Technologies of DSEI. Welcome, Sean. Dave Kapos, a partner at Karvats, Swain and & More, and former Director of U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Welcome, Dave. And Kers Webb, an associate of Karvat, Swain & More. Welcome. Companies today are transforming their operations to make use of data in every aspect of their operations, turning every enterprise, large or small, into a data enterprise, as we can call it. But the transformation in data enterprise is not just a wish or a good thing to do, but it also raises an important question about governance, security issues, and things that business leaders need to address in this new evolving ecosystem. And today, the need for a new understanding of the role of data management is more pressing and more actual. The challenges that are transforming the digital supply chain are underway. And what we would like to talk with our experts in today's conversation is actually how you can tackle those and how we can drive the governance and security into right aspects. So every single uh, element within supply chain transformation or supply chain value network can contribute to its growth. So let's start, Sean, with you. And let's start from why is supply chain governance and security of increased importance, or we can call it risk, to a company today? And what are the consideration for a good governance in today's world? Thank you, Marco. It's great to be joining uh, DSC Insights uh, once again, and uh, great to be uh, here with uh, our colleagues, uh, Dave and uh, Harris. Uh, supply chains today are, uh, are rapidly transforming, becoming ever increasingly digitally driven, uh, which means that uh, they're data driven. And uh, we're really here to talk today about uh, what it means to be a data driven enterprise and, uh, and manage a data driven uh, supply chain. So in a digital supply chain, you know, customers' des desires and, uh, and demographics uh, drive demand planning, which is, uh, which is linked to supply chain operations from sourcing through distribution. You know, whereas, uh, whereas demand and demand planning and supply chain uh, management used to be separate, uh, today they're all integrated and uh, transparency is demanded from, uh, from end to end. So as everything becomes transparent from the initial customer inquiry through uh, product manufacturing and, uh, and delivery, um, transparency is, uh, is increasingly important, uh, which, uh, which means that increasingly data is being shared amongst all the players from, uh, from the customer all the way through the back end to the, uh, to the sourcing and the manufacturing. Uh, you know today's uh, today's new customer uh, demands that uh, that uh, they have transparency, that they know where their merchandise is and when it's going to be delivered. As a result, every company is both an owner of data and a user of data, and they have an obligation today to be a good data steward and manage and protect that data. Uh, and that requires good governance, good uh, good governance practices, good data practices start at the top of the business. They must be clearly defined with understandable and implementable practices. And that requires a cultural change. Uh, businesses must understand what data they have, or what data they're sharing, with whom they're sharing it, and what obligations each party has to protect the different types of data. And we broke those the data into three different categories for ease of discussion and ease of management that I'm sure Dave and uh, Carousel uh, will, uh, will get into. But really, you have the competitive advantage data. Those are the, uh, the keys to your business, the things that you want to protect the most. You're dealing with PII, personal information of your customers. Increasingly, there's regulations uh, that differ across the globe on, uh, on your obligations to PII data. They seem to be changing on a daily basis. And then there's specific use data, which you might in fact share with competitors. ESG data fits into this category. You know, carbon, carbon uh, data fits into that category. So that's really the background on, uh, on, on really why corporations need to pay attention to data governance and data security. Uh, 
And uh, we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, as uh, as you get into the additional questions. Back to you, Marco. Thank you very much, Sean. And uh, I like one notion which you which you actually shared. You know, everybody is becoming a data steward in that sense. And that brings me to the next question, uh, which I would like to address, Dave, to you. Data is shared, you know, within a constellation by you, your suppliers, and your customers. So. What information protection procedures are needed, right? What are the rights uh, of use and how do you track your data inventory and you know, ensure compliance with your data sharing agreements and regulatory requirements? Having in mind what Sean also underlined that data exchange, uh, data sharing, or even data trading is you know, a way forward. Yeah, well, hi, Marco, and great to be here. Nice to be working with you again, Sean and Karis. Nice to see you and have this um, super interesting conversation. And thank you to DSCI Insights for you know for hosting this. So, Marco, yeah, I put the uh, answer to your question into two buckets essentially. One is like cybersecurity and the protection of information all kinds of information, any information that's confidential, whether it because it's personal information or because it's trade secrets or confidential for any other reason, um, in one category, the cyber protection category. And then I would tell you there's a second category, which is the you know management of information according to expectations that are associated with it. So just focusing on that second category, you know, in this constellation, Marco, that you have uh, um, described for us with suppliers on one side and customers on, on the other side, probably some that are a bit of both, other third parties that are part of the value chain. And then you picture, you know, your company sort of in the middle in some way of that constellation. Um, you need to know um, through clear agreements with all of those parties, what information they're sharing with you, what right they have to share it with you, what rights they can convey to you to do whatever it is that you need to do with that information, um, what further use you can and can't make of that information. Um, and you need to know all of those things and be able to um, track those things in relation to the information that you are um, receiving. Then you also, on the flip side, need to be able to set clear expectations, usually in these same agreements, for your suppliers, could be customers, other third parties in that constellation, so that as for information you share with them, there are clear expectations of how they will treat that information. Will they keep it confidential? Can they use it for any other purposes? Can they send it onward to third parties? Can they aggregate it with other information? How long can they keep it? All of those kinds of questions that need to be clearly set forth and answered. And then there's kind of a, you know, a last component um, to both the information you take in from the constellation of your suppliers and customers, et cetera, and the information you provide them, which is super important, which is ensuring you're complying with the laws um, in, in, in handling the information, both incoming and outgoing. So there's just you know lots that's required, Marco. And then coming to the second part of your question, the mechanism for dealing with that it, it's, it can't be, you know, like hard copy ledgers or we're just going to try and remember or we'll hope for the best. That no, no longer works at all in the complex um, supply chain constellations we're dealing with. You really need some form of a chief information officer in addition to a CSO, chief, chief information security officer, that's on the cyber side. And, and you need... Um, a data management system that can track for each item of data that you are taking in, right? Where it came from, what rights are associated with it, what restrictions are associated with it. And those information management systems exist, but they really need to be very well integrated and they need to act at the 
interfaces where information is coming in because once once information is in, if it can't be accounted for and the rights um, that you have associated with it aren't clearly set forth, you're going to find when you go seek legal advice from people like Harris and myself, we're going to be telling you, you need to go to the least common denominator because if you do anything that exceeds your rights, you're, you're going to be triggering contractual liability as well as regulator liability, probably in lots of countries. And that's not a good thing at all. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, and thank you also for uh, highlighting another important thing. And that's in today's world, we think about two components with you know the data enterprise. One is the cybersecurity piece, but another one is just data, data piece where you know companies should build the structure around. So cybersecurity doesn't cover the overall data and touch points you have. And, and this also brings me to uh, the next question. And I will uh, like to ask you, Keris, uh, having in mind that global supply chain operates across the board, you know, it operates across the borders, it operates across geographies. So how uh, the, the regulatory landscape uh, appears in that equation, right? It can be really confusing where, you know, we have each jurisdiction, you know, uh, enacting their own legislation. And how does a company make sense of it all and then you know ensure compliance without impacting its business because especially from uh, small and medium-sized enterprises these things can be very complex and if they are part of the larger uh, let's say value chain system within supply chain they can be really stuck yeah thank you very much marco and and i will echo everyone's thanks for having us on to talk about this really timely topic I will take it a step further than you and say, you know, this landscape is not just confusing, but it's new. It's more rigorous and more demanding at every stage. You know, it's really interesting that Dave brought up the concept of the lowest common denominator, because from a privacy perspective, it's really the exact opposite. Um, you know, we started with GDPR, which was at the time and really continues to be a lodestar for data privacy laws. And we now see jurisdictions across the world either enacting new laws or refining existing frameworks so that they resemble some of GDPR's requirements. You know, thinking of Brazil and California, you know, with the fairly new CPRA. And I expect that as continue evolvement happens, data privacy remains a moving target. Um, so to get to your question, how do you make sense of it? I think the one word answer is carefully. Um, the two word answer is probably carefully and very affirmatively uh, means treating privacy and, and cybersecurity as well as part of business strategy and part of a long term plan. It means getting the C-suite involved and invested in privacy principles, discussing with stakeholders really at every part of the company, no matter how small it really needs to be collaborative. So everybody has appropriate buy in. I think about proactivity a lot rather than reactivity. That's also really critical. So rather than thinking about, you know, how do we achieve privacy compliance, which is an important question, the better question to answer or ask is how can privacy help us achieve our business goals? Uh, I think it was interesting that the way you phrased the question was how do we worry about privacy without it impacting our business? But privacy and data more generally does impact the business and it should impact business, right? I don't think it needs to be a negative sum game. You know, today, investors at every level really have taken a keen interest in data privacy. And so you're much more likely to not only attract customers, but to do more business with existing customers. If you can get on the right side of compliance, it's a really great way to think about, you know, boosting your brand and ultimately positively impacting the bottom line. So there's a lot to think about in a really positive way. It doesn't always need to be, oh God, we need to think about data privacy compliance. It can actually be something that's really great for brand recognition. Keris, thank you very much, especially in bringing up, you know, the positive aspect of the story, because I think with complexity, people first always see problems, right? But you are underlining these problems in a way of how the business leaders, especially in entrepreneurship, think 
towards the opportunities. And that, that can, you know, I love the, the notion of, you know, being proactive rather than reactive. So trying to build on that note, and it would be question for uh, all three of you. Uh, we always like to close these sessions with a call to action. So uh, I would kindly ask uh, all of you just to contribute from your point of view, what actions uh, or what action, let's say one, if we, if we choose, need to be taken today to plan and protect, you know, the, the, the future of supply chain resilience? You know, what would be the thing that the companies can start, you know, first with? Sean, let's start with you. Yeah, I can go first. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Uh, you know, I think uh, being a good data steward is just not optional in a digital world. Uh, it's got to become part of your culture. It requires cultural change. You know, for years, uh, large companies have had uh, business uh, practices and uh, do annual certification of the, for those business practices. I think data, you know, adds on to that and is an increasingly important part of, uh, of good business practices. Uh, so that's number one, uh, the cultural change, driving it throughout the organization, which means that corporate policies must be defined, uh, operationalized, and audible for uh, for compliance. Uh, it's uh, as as Karis said, this is positive. However, you need to make sure that uh, that the the internal workings are there, that people understand them, and that it does enhance your brand going forward which means you must have, a, as Dave pointed out, you must have a data inventory, which classifies the data that you have by type and obligations. You wanna keep it as consistent as possible, but you need to, you know, the lowest common denominator, but you need to identify the exceptions where there are exceptions uh, and ensure that you're uh, you're complying with, uh, with those obligations. And, you know, finally, you need to understand how the data is being used, your data, um, by whom, uh, both inside and, and outside your organization and, and, uh, and throughout your supply chain. Uh, it's, uh, it's a formable task. It's one that needs to be done. And it's, uh, and it's one that, uh, that can aid your, uh, your brand recognition uh, and value going forward. So that uh, Dave and, and Karis, I'm sure have a lot to add to that, uh, but that's the start. Thank you very much, Sean. Dave? Yeah, sure. You know what I would add to that, Marco, is adopting a notion of continuous improvement. The landscape is changing uh, rapidly. Um, it is evolving. Data practices are improving uh, globally, sectorally. Um, IT systems are improving in their ability to, uh, to assist us in, in managing um, compliance and, and getting brand leverage out of, um, of, of good stewardship. Um, it, it's an, uh, an area, you know, I like to use the old metaphor of the, you know, bear chasing, you know, two people through the woods and one of them's running as fast as he can. And the other one says, you'll never outrun the bear. And the first person says, I don't need to outrun the bear, just need to outrun you. Um, the point being, um, you, and to put it in the positive again, uh, you don't need to be perfect, but you do need to take these responsibilities extremely seriously, and you do need to adopt a culture of continuous improvement. And if you do that, um, you'll do extremely well in managing data. You'll be able to get great leverage from it, and you'll be able to make it part of your brand in a very positive way. Thank you very much, uh, Dave and Karis. Yeah, I think both of both Sean and Dave said it perfectly um, to underscore, right? Data is a key value driver for businesses. And so it's imperative that businesses start treating it that way. Um, I think collaboration is the additional thing I'll add, you know, both internally and externally. When I think of clients that have great data governance, it's because there is this cross-functional understanding, you know, not Everybody needs to have the exact same task or role or responsibility with respect to data, but everybody needs to come to the table having harmonized on the principles that underlie how they individually treat that data. Uh, I think that's true for the entire data life cycle from ingestion to analysis, monitoring, removal, the whole, everyone needs to sort of understand that. 
And I think that needs to apply both, as I mentioned, internally, but also to vendors, as we see, especially with the supply chains that we talk about in the article. Vendors are a key part of supply chain resilience. And so involving them as much as is appropriate at every stage of the process, I think only encourages and fosters that resilience as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keris. And, you know, if I can try just high level to sum up, uh, we what we got as inputs is to, you know, data stewardship is not a requirement. It's basically a, a must and, you know, an actual thing that every organization should do. Creating a team around it and structure, which can then govern the data and also uh, work horizontally through the enterprise or a company is a very important thing to connect all the touch points. Then going towards uh, continuous improvement, as you mentioned, Dave, is something that sh organizations should take as a lead and nobody will be perfect, but the steps should be made and it should be a puzzle that it's built from various different actions, activities, and also collaborations with the legal partners in order rather to be proactive, as it was mentioned, than reactive, because reactive in this sense will cost much more than being proactive. So really, I would like to uh, thank this distinguished group and uh, uh, Keris, Dave, Sean, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge here, also the research you have done together and you know, like the practical work in this area. Uh, I'm sure we will be coming back to you also in the in the coming future to see in which directions things are evolving because we see this uh, as an evolution of enterprise or companies in a way which will not stop with what we are seeing today, but actually with all the technology advancement, data touch points with customers and partners and suppliers and the whole network will just increase the complexity. But let's finish on a positive note. It will create new opportunities for the well-organized systems. So thank you once again. And this was another uh, DSCI Insights in Action and stay tuned with us. We'll come with more valuable digital transformation, uh, digital supply chain transformation topics in the future.